Welcome to Biology at Ease. In my previous video, I gave a brief introduction about the process of reproduction and we also discussed asexual reproduction in plants and animals. Now, in this video, we will be discussing sexual reproduction in plants. There are two types of plants, flowering plants and non-flowering plants. So, sexual reproduction occurs in flowering plants whereas in non-flowering plants, asexual reproduction takes place by various methods like spore formation. Now, in this video, we will be covering five major topics, the steps in the process of sexual reproduction in plants, parts of a flower, pollination, fertilization and formation of fruits and seeds. So let's start with the process of sexual reproduction in plants. Now the male organ of a flower is known as stamen and inside stamen microscopic particles are present which are known as pollen grains and it is the pollen grain part of a flower which contains the male sex cells or male gametes. The female organ of the flower is known as carpal and a part of carpal called ovule contains the female gametes which are also known as ova or eggs. So inside a flower the male part is known as stamen which contains microscopic structures known as pollen grains which contains the male sex cells whereas the female organ of the flower is known as carpal and a part of carpal called ovule contains the female gametes called ova and eggs. Now during the process of sexual reproduction in plants the male gametes present inside the pollen grains fuses with the female gametes which are present inside the ovule and this process is known as fertilization. As a result of fertilization, seed is formed and this seed when gets appropriate conditions like proper temperature, light, water and air germinates to form a new plant. So sexual reproduction in plants forms the seed which forms a plant. Now let's come to the parts of a flower. The major parts of the flower includes receptacle, sepal, petals, carpal and stamen. Receptacle is the base of the flower to which all the other parts of the flower are attached. Sepal is a green leaf like structure of a flower which protects the flower during the initial stage. So you must have seen the bud of a rose. The bud of a rose is initially red in color or pink in color or any other rose and it is covered by the green color leaf like structures. So these green color leaf like structures are not actually the leaves, they are the sepals of the rose flower. Now petals are the colorful parts of a flower. So in rose, red, pink, white or whatever rose it is, the color of the rose is due to the color of the petals of that rose plant. Coming to carpels, carpels are the female reproductive organ of the flower which contains the female gametes which are known as ova or eggs. Stamen are the male reproductive organ of a flower which contains contains pollen grains inside which the male gametes are present. So these are the major parts of the flower. Receptacle which is the base of the flower. Sepal the green leafy like structure of the flower which protects the flower during the initial stages. Petals the colorful parts of a flower and these colorful parts that is the petals are essential because they helps in attracting the insects for the process of pollination and these petals also protects the male and female reproductive parts of the flower. Stamen are the male reproductive organ of a flower and these stamens surrounds the female reproductive organ of the flower which is known as carpal. Now stamen is divided into two parts. The upper part is known as anther whereas the lower stalk like structure is known as filament. It is the anther part of the stamen which contains pollen grains. So pollen grains containing the male gametes are present inside the anther part of the stamen. Filament is a stalk like structure to which anther is attached. Carpal is divided into three parts, stigma, style and ovary. Stigma is the topmost part of the carpal. Style is a tube like structure which joins stigma to the ovary and ovary is the swollen part of the carpal which contains ovule and inside ovule the female gamete that is ova or egg is present. So during the process of fertilization the pollen grains from the anther region of the stamen fuses with the ova present inside the ovary part of the carpal. This process takes place under two major steps which are known as pollination and fertilization. So let's start with pollination. Pollination refers to the transfer of pollen grains from the anther part of the stamen 
to the stigma part of the carpal. Pollination occurs through various sources like insects, air and water. Now there are two types of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. In self-pollination, the transfer of pollen grains takes place from anther of one flower to the stigma of the same flower or the transfer of pollen grains occurs from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower but of the same plant. So self-pollination is the type of pollination in which a single flower or two different flowers of a same plants are involved. Whereas in cross-pollination, the pollen grains are transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of the flower present on another plant which is of same type as the previous plant. So in cross-pollination, two plants are involved whereas in self-pollination, the transfer of pollen grains occurs within the same plant, either between two flowers of the same plant or within the same flower. Now there are two types of flowers, unisexual flowers and bisexual flowers. Unisexual flowers are those flowers in which either the stamen is present that is the male reproductive organ is present or the carpal that is female reproductive part is present. So that is why the name uni where uni stands for single. So either male or female reproductive parts are present in unisexual flower. Whereas in bisexual flowers both stamen and carpals are present. In bisexual flowers there is a greater chance for occurrence of self-pollination since both stamen and carpal are present in a single flower. It does doesn't mean that cross pollination cannot occur in bisexual flowers but there is more possibility for the occurrence of self pollination in bisexual flowers. Let's quickly revise pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther part of the stamen to the stigma part of the carpal. There are two types of pollination, self pollination and cross pollination. In self pollination, pollen grains are transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower or from the anther of one flower to the stigma of same flower. Self-pollination occurs within the same plant whereas in cross-pollination the pollen grains are transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of another plant. So that is all about pollination. Let's come to fertilization. When the pollen grains have reached the stigma that is from the anther when the pollen grains have been transferred to the stigma part of the carpal now these pollen grains fuses with the female gamete present inside the carpal what happens the pollen grains on reaching the stigma burst and they form a tube like structure which is known as pollen tube this tube provides passage for the male gamete present inside the pollen grain to reach the female gamete present inside the ovule part of the ovary. So when pollen grains have reached the stigma, the pollen grains burst, they form a tube which is known as pollen tube and this pollen tube allows the passage of the male gamete inside the pollen grain to the ovule which is present inside the ovary. Now when the fusion between the male gamete and the female gamete that is egg inside the ovule occurs this female gamete or this egg is now called as fertilized egg which is also known as zygote so this zygote is the result of fusion of male and female gametes inside the ovule part of the carpal now the zygote undergoes several divisions and forms a structure which is known as embryo and this embryo is the structure inside which the baby plant is present. Meanwhile, the ovule develops a hard coating and it develops into seed. So when zygote divides to form embryo, during the same time, the ovule is surrounded by a hard coating and it forms seed. So seed is present inside the ovary. Now the ovary grows and it develops into fruit. So this is how seeds are formed inside the fruit. Let's quickly revise this. The fusion of male gamete with the female gamete inside the ovule part of the carpal leads to the formation of zygote. This zygote divides several times and forms embryo and inside embryo the baby plant is present. The ovule develops a heart covering and forms seed and the ovary forms the fruit. So this is how the formation of seed inside the fruit occurs. Now there is a part of a seed which contains food 
for the baby plant that is for the embryo and this part of the seed is known as cotyledon so cotyledon is the part of the seed which contains food for the baby plant when the embryo that is the baby plant inside the seed gets appropriate conditions like food warmth light water and proper air this baby plant comes out from the seed and grows into a new plant the part of the baby plant which forms the root of the plant is known as radical whereas the part of the embryo which forms the upper body of the plant is known as plumule so the embryo inside the seed has two parts radical and plumule plumule is the part of the baby plant which forms the upper body of the plant whereas radical is the part of the baby plant which forms the root of the plant and the part of the seed which contains stored food for the baby plant is known as cotyledon so this is how fertilization leads to the formation of seed and the baby plant present inside the seed on getting appropriate conditions forms a new plant so this is how sexual reproduction action occurs in plants seeds are the reproductive units of plants which means sexual reproduction in plants leads to the formation of seed so seed is the result of sexual reproduction in plants so this is all about plant reproduction in my next video we'll be studying sexual reproduction in animals i hope you're clear with the content if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos thank you so much for watching